and uh, what we're looking for in those crossovers. And uh, in this situation, we're going to go back here to this candle that we have here, this one candle where the blue line, that predicted exponential moving average, moves and crosses above the actual moving average. You can see that as that moves up, when you look down below, you can see that the predicted difference, we already have that turn to the higher side uh, a day or two ahead of that. We have the predicted differences moving up, which means this trend is strengthening to the upside. You also have the neural index at one, which suggests that the typical price will be higher in two days. Now, typical price is the average of the high, the lows, and the close. So it doesn't mean, uh, you know, here's what the close will be or anything like that. But what the typical price will be in two days. And it's the statistic that Vantage Point uses to indicate the, the accuracy of their uh, software, their short-term forecast. And you can see that we put those together. It's not just one uh, indicator that comes together, but a combination of those three that suggest where the move might take us. Uh, you can see that in this particular case, we had everything lined up. Uh, now, what do we do with that? Do we buy? Where do we buy? You know, do we get into the market? Well, there's several ways we can do it. We're going to talk about another method later, but there are several ways you can do it. You could buy on the open of that handle, perhaps. Uh, you could also have some kind of strategy for buying uh, somewhere within the range of that candle. You can buy. Uh, if you think that that moving average is going up and you see the action during the day, you're following it into that, you might say, well, I know that if the price moves above uh, a certain point, the moving average is going to move up, and so you might even buy sometime during this day on an intraday type of uh, market move. A lot of ways that you can get into the market and get long. In this case, that would have had you in, the, in roughly the 1330 area uh, in the E-mini. Then, as the market did move up, uh, you know, again, all of this is predicated upon the fact that you're going to be managing your trading by uh, setting your stops, you know, keeping everything in line and managing the stops trade as you go along the way. Then you get, you know, another little clue here. Well, that looks like a pretty bearish candle. Uh, you talk about some of the candle implications and foundational charting techniques and other webinars. But just to show here, we kind of have an indication here. We might have a turning type of situation. When we look down below, we can see that, yes, we start to have a turnover and the predicted difference. And we have the uh, neural index dropping down to zero, suggesting the typical price in two days will be less than it is today. We don't have the crossover of the moving average yet, but we have an alert that it, it's uh, potentially ready to take place. And so uh, then we need to, first of all, get out of that trade that we have, that long trade we have, so at some point uh, in there, and I don't know, you know, it depends on your criteria when to see that downturn. Are you going to get out then? Are you going to get out on the open? Well, let's say you uh, start to see the downturn, you see the downturn, and you see the other indicators turning down. Uh, you might get out on the open, let's say, somewhere in the 1350 range, a 20-point profit on that long trade that you took. Again, assuming that you're managing your trade, following it up with stops, and keeping all those in, in line. Uh, you can follow the uh, signals all the way through. You can see that for a stretch of time here, the market stayed pretty much on the downside. The, the moving average stayed on the downside, indicating the trend was down. Uh, a little bump that we had in here where it moved to the upside. Uh, that's kind of, again, as I say, the bane of the trend trader because you get those little moves up there and it make you wonder what you should do. In most cases, if you're following traditional technical analysis, you're going to stop above a high, and then you're going to move that to a, you know, kind of another obvious high, and so you probably would not be stopped out. You probably would stick with this trend uh, for a while as it moves along. And, uh, you know, that's certainly one of the things that, uh, you know, a trading plan, a trading strategy would have to involve is to how we're going to, uh, you know, stay uh, with that trend if it as it develops. Uh, now we're going to talk about uh, a little bit more. We're going to move our, our time frame again. We're going to talk about the uh, uh, market as it moves along, and we're going to move ahead to the more current time frame. We don't want to waste all our time talking about history other than to explain that's the way it was, and that's how you get into uh, the situations that you get into with the uh, crossover analysis. Uh, you can see that we have had several different clues here when you get into the time frame that uh, the most recent time frame that everybody was concerned about and the fact that we had uh, the panic type of the situation that occurred 
would you have been in the market? Would you have been prepared for that? Uh, you know, everybody would like to think they have every other type of system, but how would you do it? You know, okay, well, we had to cross over here, and this came, um, it was late July or so, indicated that. And again, you had that uh, crossover, you had the drop, you know, we had some of those right here. You might say, well, I would have got in as it dropped below that. If I'm doing my traditional technical analysis routine, I would have followed it on down. And you can see that the market then did uh, slump the moving average, indicated the trend, moved on down, and, uh, you know, put you in a pretty good position uh, to, you know, take advantage of the move as it occurred. You can see also about that same time frame, we had the neural index, uh, again, a comparison of two three-day moving averages, and we had the predicted differences, both pointing to the downside and the moving average crossover suggested a downside move as well. So definitely, you know, if nothing else, you would be looking at that area as a point to go short, somewhere uh, around 1,300, 1,280, somewhere there is a potential place to have gone short. As the market moves down, you can see then there is a time frame here for uh, kind of a little sideways action. The market uh, you know, reached down and sputtered. You can see we have a nice candle here that suggests a turn the sideways here. It takes a while for the market to move back up above uh, the, the predicted moving average to move, make that crossover above the actual moving average. Um, again, would you get out there? Well, if you see a move that has gone from 1,300 to below 1,200, you might say, well, I'll have my Profit target, you know, maybe 100 points. Uh, that's a perfectly legitimate way to trade. You might have some other means of doing it. You might, uh, you know, wait for the market to, uh, you know, get down to a point where you have this uh, candle that we pointed out here, the candle that was kind of that uh, turning point candle. And you might say, well, if that's the case, I'm getting out on the close of, or on the open rather, of that next candle. It opened right here. That was around 1168. So it would have been a nice profitable move just using the the uh, moving averages as your guideline. Now you can see also when we look at the moving averages and for uh, the more current time frame to get into uh, today's market, you can see crossover types of uh, things that, you know, made it a little dicier than it might have been because, uh, you know, of what was going on. When we look at the current price, you can see that we have dipped the predicted moving average has dipped below the actual moving average, but on the other hand, you have the, the neural index has moved from zero to one. Um, the predicted differences are kind of one to the sideways point right here, and so it's not real clear exactly uh, which way we should be in the market. When you look only, uh, you know, at that uh, moving average type situation. So what we need beyond that, and we'll take a look at this, is uh, a little bit beyond the, the just the moving average concept. But we need to have a way, or would like to have a way, where, where we can determine exactly where we might want to get in. And for that, we're going to add another uh, vantage point indicator, and that is going to be the predicted high and the predicted low, the predicted high and the low for the next day, which give you a potential trading range the next day. Uh, these lines, this is the, the gold line that you see.